ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It is the Friday, June 17th edition. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. My name is Paul Swan. I'm here until 6 o'clock. We will take your phone calls at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. The text line is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Where do we begin today? I still want to talk about yesterday's show. And if you haven't heard it yet, you can go back and get it on our podcast the easy way to do that is go to WRVC.com. We've got the player right there for you. You can subscribe in Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. It's it's a great listen because Christian Spears, Marshall's athletic director, spent the entire show with us yesterday. I never know how long I'm going to get him. And he's like, sure, let's just go some more. And that's always great because we got a lot out of him. So let's talk about some of the things that maybe excited you yesterday. And if something he said really stood out to you, I want to hear it from you. And again, that text line number is 304-396-8255, 304-396-TALK. How about the if he gets the scoreboard approved? If he gets what he wants for a scoreboard, it's going to be the third largest in the country, third as far as a college football. I believe he's talking about college football scoreboard, third largest. He said he wanted the largest. I guess third largest is is okay. It's adequate, right? Have an opportunity to go to stadium and really see that life-size gigantic replay. How cool would that be, though? Just take those those erector set seats out. Just, Just get rid of that. Just trash it. Throw that away. Take it to the restore. You can buy a piece of it if you want to. You can own a piece of the part of the stadium I hate. I might even go get a piece of it just because I hate it so much. Get, get rid of the thing I hate most about Jones C. Edwards Stadium, the erector sets. Trash it. Put that scoreboard over there. All of a sudden, Jones C. Edwards Stadium looks a little different, doesn't it? It just looks a little different. Looks pretty nice, wouldn't you think? And that vort will stand out, and you can do all kinds of things with it. So that excited a lot of people. I think seeing Marshall focus on cleaning up Its own house is really important to me right now. We we talked about what does $9 million get you, bathroom renovations. Have you seen the bathrooms at Jones C. Edwards Stadium? I'm not saying it's barbaric, but that's not what I want to see when I'm coming into Jones C. Edwards Stadium. I don't want to see that if I'm a fan. I don't want to see that if I'm a visiting fan. I don't want to see that. Have something decent there. So I think $9 million, I'm okay, good. $9 million it is. Redo the whole thing, all the plumbing, everything. You don't have to. You don't have to have a valet out there, or you you don't have to have someone handing you a a fresh towel. You don't have to go that far. But let's get that into a situation where you're not embarrassed by going in there. You're not like you're not put off by it because that should be some of the most important parts of the of the facility. The facilities. The facilities are the most important thing. After all the Things on the football field that make you want to come and watch a Marshall game. And by the way, have you seen more of the rollout? Herd's putting out the the videos, and it's it's starting to look good. It's popping. That was the goal, to make that field pop. And so you can't argue with what it's looking like right now. It's really going to stand out. So if you have that new Sunbelt logo, all of that put onto that field, and then you get rid of that end zone rector set. Just do something nice there. Have the party deck. Whatever you want to do with it that really makes it a different area for herd fans. You can attract some younger herd fans to hang out. You can have have that party deck atmosphere. Because a lot of people are going to go to the game and, and they're just going to go to the game. We're going to watch the game, experience the game, root for their team. Some people are going to the game and they're looking to have more of a social visit to Jones C. Edwards Stadium, right? Hey, the game's going on. I'm hanging out with my friends. We're going to go to the game. We're going to hang out, maybe hang out at the party deck. Have an opportunity to enjoy a nice night at the stadium. We'll watch the game. We'll hang out with some friends. You know, we'll have a good time here. Great atmosphere. I mean, there are different flavors for everyone. And I think that 
we're going in the right direction here. So I'm excited about all of that. What excited you, though? You know, was it a potential sort of facelift we're going to see at the Henderson Center? We're going to see some new courts soon. What about that? What about some tables being available? You're going to have some more premium seating options for herd fans. So you, know, you might be moving soon. You're, you might be moving from your usual location. You might get a shot at one of those premium seats, and then that's going to open up some baseline seats for someone else. That's going to be great. And then if you're some of those people that are going to be impacted by where the students are going to go, again, I was assured that Christian Spears, the athletic director of Marshall University, would call you and talk to you personally. I mean, if you're going to move me, that's pretty good that the the guy who is making the seat arrangements actually would call me and just say, hey, we're going to try to put you somewhere that's really good, but we're changing this up. But now students are going to show up, though. That's the thing. Students have got to show up. Here's the seating for you. Now, this isn't, this isn't Cameron Indoor. This isn't where the students get the priority around the court here, but you're getting a pretty good piece of real estate here. you got to show up. How many students are with me in the audience today? I want to hear from you. Would better seating help you show up? I mean, for me, I was just excited to have seating. Once upon a time, when I was a student at Marshall University, I was excited, okay, I, I get a free ticket now to go see herd basketball. Of course, herd basketball was coming off some runs in the NCAA Southern Conference Tournament, making appearances in the NCAA, yeah, probably more accurate to say. And so, you know, Marshall basketball was still a thing, and then I get there, and it's just, okay, what happened? What happened here? This is a team going to the NCAA Tournament on an almost annual basis here. What happened? Still, I was, ha- I was happy. I was happy to have a seat. But that end zone seating, though, is that a good play? Have them closer to the court. Have them a little bit more impactful. Have them on the side of the arena where the visitors – are benched i mean that's a pretty good idea right that's a that's a smart idea there have them where the visitor have them on the visitor side closer to the visitors makes perfect sense why didn't we do that before having the fans over by marshall that's i'm talking students here having the students over by marshall okay they're cheering you on great but get them over near the visitors and without doing anything that we're going to regret Get on them. Not doing anything we're going to regret, mind you, here. Let's be creative with our getting on the visiting team. Let's be fun. Let's be funny and creative. Let's let's not do vulgar. Let's, let's be good about this. Funny is better. Creative is better. Research the opponent. Find something embarrassing. Not Again, let's not be vulgar about this here. But let's be creative. Can we do that? That's what I'm asking. Can we do that, please? So we've got a lot to get into. Turf update on Twitter right now. You can see a little bit more of the new turf going in. Football camps are coming up this weekend. You've got the Rasheen Ali Skills and Drills Camp. That's at the 80 Lewis Community Center. And that is going to be on Saturday, 10 to noon, ages 8 to 18, First 50 campers get a free shirt. And then you've got coming up the third Marshall football camp on Sunday. Camps are open, $20 per camper. And there's going to be another one next Sunday. So if you haven't registered, you've got to get to herdzone.com and register there. So we've got camps coming up for kids. You've got a couple opportunities. You want to take your kid out to see Rasheen Ali, the skills and drills camp. That's at the A.D. Lewis Community Center. That's tomorrow and then Sunday. The Marshall football camp is coming up as well. So you've got some opportunities to get out there and be a part of the herd and see that uh, the camps are, are really something for your kid. Now, of course, you know, again, you might see some Marshall. I don't know. I don't know how much Marshall you're going to see at the Rasheen Ali Skills and Drills Camp. I don't know what is going to happen there. You're going to have players there, I'm sure. Uh, Sunday, those that's where you're going to really see the coaches. But you could do both, possibly. But the Rasheen's is free. The herd camp is twenty dollars per camper. Who knows? Uh, you might uh, you might be a tight end looking for a place to go, and Marshall might have an offer for you. Tight end Hayden Hagler announcing on Twitter, entering his name in the transfer portal. Three years of eligibility remaining, and transfer portal giveth, and the transfer portal taketh away. So of course the whole. I put it out there on Twitter, press conference thing from him. I'm not going to read it all, but it's pretty much the standard stuff. Yeah, at this point, I'm really 
not sure I'm just going to read all that because, again, it's, you know, they all begin with, I, I want to thank Marshall University, thanking everybody, appreciate your time there. And with that said, I'm leaving. You know, with that said, yeah. with that being said, that's standard I'm leaving tweet material here, with that being said. With that being said, I've got more coming up. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back. It's the Friday, June 17th edition, The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We got a lot to get into we got to start with the Golden State Warriors. The 2022 NBA champions. 103-90 victory last night in Game 6. So, Golden State wins three straight, closing it out at one point down 2-1. to one. Now, Andrew Wiggins has a championship. So, you knew he was going to be a star when he was at Huntington Prep. You could see it coming. Just needed to be in the right place to really thrive in the professional ranks. And with Golden State... This should be the first of many championships in his career. He has a long way to go as far as his career is concerned, but this is the first to many, I'm sure, championships for Andrew Wiggins. And it's nice, of course, you know, you have that connection with him playing in Huntington Prep, seeing what he was uh, capable of doing, and then making it to the NBA. So you have that connection here. You know, those times that he was here, you were like, okay, this guy's going next level, definite, and you could see it. So Jason Tatum didn't like him, that's for sure. We locked him down. So this is over now. Bye-bye Celtics, by the way. Bye-bye Celtics. That made me happy. The Lakers fan in me made me – that made me happy. LeBron James, though, is basically holding out. Not, not like he's going he's gonna to wait and see what's going on now. He's keeping it with the NBA. So he's basically, yeah, I want to see if this team's committed to winning. I want to see the Lakers win. If that means decommitting to you, I'm good. Again, I'm a Lakers fan. I was good with LeBron being on the team as long as it offered value. But what does LeBron bring you now? What value does he bring you? I mean, his name is, is there. He's got the name recognition, but who's doing it better right now? Who's doing it better? LeBron James or Steph Curry? Who's doing it better? When we're all said and done, as far as legacies are concerned, who's going to have the better legacy? It doesn't mean you're the best scorer or the top scorer or you've got all the records. Who's going to have the best legacy? And I would think that we'd have to look at the Golden State Warriors and start looking at some their direction. And Steph Curry, how many championships does LeBron have? Four. How many championships does Steph Curry have? Four. Which one has a better shot at getting five? Steph Curry. Does LeBron have another championship run in him? I don't know if he does. These Golden State Warriors, they might win it again next season. I don't know which team is going to step up and stop them. Yeah, will be the Celtics back again? Is there a team in the West that can step up and stop them? Where's the contender going to come out of the East? I mean, will it be the Heat? Maybe will it be the Celtics right back here next season? Whatever the case may be. You can't deny what the Golden State Warriors have done. And, of course, I'm I'm rooting for them only because, again, Andrew Wiggins. You know, I'm finding a guy that I, I we have a connection with. I'm going to root for them. At the end of the day, I'm still a Lakers fan, but it's hard not to pull for Andrew Wiggins because you know, you know the guy. You know the guy. And, of course, you know, you got to like Steph Curry. So you know, NBA Finals are done. Now we've got the Stanley Cup coming up tomorrow, Game 2. That's going to be a 7.30 airtime on our sister station, Cat Sports 93.3 and 1340. You're going to get several days rest here between Game 1 and Game 2. I don't know. Are we going to see a better Tampa Bay team with a little bit more rest, a few days rest between games? Could we see Tampa Bay come back and even this series? It's tough to beat the Colorado Avalanche. They've been really strong in the playoffs so far. And that's coming up tomorrow. We've got it for you here again on our sister station, Cat Sports 93.3 and 1340. I'm looking forward to that one. And, of course, the Pirates are in action tonight. Seven-game homestand and taking on the San Francisco Giants. You look at this matchup, you would think that should be evenly matched. I don't think so. I mean, number three team in the you know West, number three team in the division for the Pirates. Yeah, thankfully the Reds are still in the division. So 
You would think, okay, this might be evenly matched. Uh, no. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? Pirates had a nine-game losing streak. Come on. Getting hard to get excited for them. But you can listen to the game right here tonight on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Uh, they did beat the Cardinals though, 6-4. So you got the losing streak over. So maybe this will this will be something where they turn it around, right? That's what we're hoping for. We're going to try to see if the Pirates can turn it around. All right, when we continue, we're going to get you caught up on what's happening with a couple other sports going on for the Thundering Herd. Women's soccer releasing the schedule today. We'll talk about that. A little addition to the Charleston Dirty Birds. We'll talk about that. We'll get your phone calls and text in. That is coming up. You can do that at 877-420-TALK. That's to talk. And to text, it's 304-396-TALK. More coming up here on The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. So let's talk soccer. I mean, we could talk about World Cup soccer coming to the United States and talk about all the locations. Uh, You'll have an opportunity to go watch the World Cup. We could do that, but no, I'd rather talk about women's soccer as the herd releasing its schedule today. And it's the first go around in the Sun Belt. We've got a couple of exhibition matches to talk about. Herd's got a four game homestand to start things off as well. So EKU is going to kick things off with the homestand as far as exhibitions concerned, then a quick hop to uh, Bellarmine. That's going to be an exhibition match. And then you get started with four really strong matches, High Point, Akron, Moorhead, and Ohio. And then on the road, four out of five. So the Herd's got to go to Liberty and head to Radford, take on those Red Hawks of Miami, then back at home for Southern Miss. So you got Southern Miss on the schedule, obviously. That'll be a good way to get things started. And then at Arkansas State, first two should be interesting to say the least. And then I like how at least it makes sense the way this thing is structured. On the 17th, you got Southern Miss. September 17th, Southern Miss. And then... On the 22nd, it's going to be at Arkansas State. And then on the 25th, App State here in Huntington. And then you look at October. On the 1st, Louisiana Monroe on the road. And then on the 6th, it's going to be Georgia Southern here in Huntington. And then on the 9th, it's going to be Georgia State at 1 p.m. on the road. And then October 14th, it's going to be James Madison here at 7 p.m. And then Coastal Carolina will be on the 20th. And that's going to be at Coastal. 23rd, it's going to be here against Texas State. That's going to be good for the Herd. And then you wrap things up on the 27th with Old Dominion on the road. And then we'll see what happens as far as the postseason obligations are concerned. So how do you feel about this so far? And, of course, I know you're getting excited for the men as well. But don't forget, we talk more about the men, obviously, because you win the national championship. But – and this could be a good opportunity for the women to start getting its program really in that competitive mode. I think that they have an opportunity here. So we're pretty excited around here to see what happens with Michael Swan and his squad. So this probably I'm sure this is going to be similar to what we can expect for the men. When we when we see the men, that's going to be more I I think that's what we can expect from this league. The scheduling seems to make a little more sense. Is, is there really anything out of place there when you look at that schedule? Not really. I mean, the travel doesn't seem stupid. That one thing, the travel doesn't seem stupid. You play App State, and then you got a few days before you're at Louisiana Monroe, and then you got Georgia Southern here, and then you travel to Georgia State. Honestly, it's... I like it for the fact that you're not trying to go from one place to another. Basically, you're playing a match, and then you got a home game, and then you're back on the road. Then you got a home game. I'd rather do that than just try to go from one place to another and chase all over. So that makes a little bit more sense to me. I think we're going to see that more. The schedule is going to make a lot more sense. And, of course, you know, I think we're going to have a situation where, okay, if the women are gone, the men are probably be in action. So... There's going to be something going on every weekend, and there's opportunities for multiple things going on as well. You know, you could have football crossover with soccer. Go see a football game and then head on down to the hoop, family field, the vet. Go see some soccer or start your day with soccer and then head on down to Jonesy Edwards Stadium. 
mean, that could be something as well. And if you get there early, think of about this way. If you get to the football game early, maybe soccer's still playing. Maybe they got a full house there. Maybe they'll put the soccer game up on that brand new scoreboard, that video board that's going to be the third largest in the country if Christian Spears gets his way. Third largest. I know for some of you that wasn't large enough. How big does it need to be? What's what's big enough for you? Is third largest not big enough for you? Can you not see the replays accurately with third largest? How do you I, I if I picture this, I'm envisioning the way I'm envisioning this here with this scoreboard. One, the erector set's gone. I want a piece of that, but still, I just want a piece of that. Just looks like a keepsake of my anger when that thing went up. How terrible it was. It's like Really, this, 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 this is it. This, these are the seats. This is the seating. We're really this beautiful stadium, and and this monstrosity. No, get that out of there. Put that scoreboard up. It's gonna be huge. It's it's gonna be huge. I think that's gonna be more of a festive atmosphere. Honestly, I I almost wish we didn't put the seating. I mean, we had to. We had to have seating there to get the seating capacity correct up. I almost wish we still had though the grassy end zone. I, I don't know. I don't know if you could get away with that today, but if you could have had the, because I like the grassy end zone. I mean, you had the, you had the scoreboard, and of course that thing, you would be dwarfed by what we're trying to do here. Yeah, you, you remember the light bright scoreboard? I mean, it, hey, look, in 1991, that was all right. The light bright scoreboard was all right. It was okay. It wasn't terrible for 1991. Had the had the score, the time, had the light bright over here with you know was the rudimentary graphics. It was fine. At the sponsorship boards, it was fine. Yeah, no, no, we got to go OLED. OLED. We got to have video wall now. We got to have something that rivals the WWE. You, you know, watch a WWE event, you know, that bit, big video wall. We got to have something like that. Only if we could get the team to maybe come up from that, you know, just like come out like an entrance here. You know, wouldn't that be great if the team came from the other side instead of the facility building? Yeah, with the entrance music playing, and here they come. I mean, okay, maybe we're going a little too WWE into this show right now, but how how great is that going to be? You're going to go to, I think in a few years, we're going to see Jones C. Edwards Stadium transformed a little bit more, and I think it's going to be, it's not going to be a brand new stadium. That's going to take a lot more money. It's not going to be pristine, brand new. They just took the shrink wrap off of it. But I think you can do some really nice things with that stadium. You can bring it back to a point where you know it's seen a few days, but it's it's been cared for. Pressure washing seats go a long way. Expanding the concourse, redoing the concourse. I would love to see them do some different things with the concourse as well. Let's get rid of some of that fencing. Let's enclose. The, let's expand and enclose the concourse. Can we do that? I mean, I feel like we okay. Hey, we get, we need a beer garden, so let's shoehorn this beer garden in here. Okay, we need a stadium store, so let's shoehorn this stadium store in here. And the stadium store is nice, and you know, the beer garden does what it needs to do, but I think there are ways to go about this. Maybe you can come up with a way. Again, you just built, this, you built the Thunder store there, the Thundering Zone store. But what if you could really do some expansion of the concourse, make the concourse nicer, have more points of sale, have more concession opportunities, different food, lots of different choices here. And maybe you do something a little bit more modern as well. I mean, bring up, bring the technology up to speed here. What can you do with the concessions? And again, it's not my money. I'm not, you know, I, I'll throw out my ideas, but you know, how do you make the point of sale more efficient? I mean, can you go to app ordering? What if, what if you could order from the app and then they bring you the concessions? What if ha- that happened? You could do that. Like certain items, like, okay, I'm going to order from the app and then somebody will bring it down to you. you know, and you show, you show the app so you get the right order. I don't know. You flash the app like, okay, are you, are you Paul Swan? Yes, here, here's the app. Okay, great. Here's, here's your pretzel. Here's the pretzel Christian Spheres promised you. Here it is. That would be cool. Again, Got so many ways you can go with this. I know we're getting way ahead of ourselves here, but at the same time, that's almost the point. We're getting to the point where we're starting to think about these things more. What what can we do to make game day better? What can we do to make it easier? Why won't you stand in line for a concession? Because you got to stand in line. Honestly, 
I have people that I know that don't go to the grocery store because they can't stand standing in line. Okay, that's fine. But at the same time, you're trying to make sales here. So let's find ways to, yeah, people want to stand in line. That's fine. Give them an opportunity if they want to use the app. I mean, can can we do that? Is that, yeah, something that's realistic? I mean, do we go with, um, we go with digital tickets only? Get rid of paper tickets altogether. Just go to digital tickets, you know, for the rest of the way. All sports, just go with digital tickets. Forget printing tickets. I mean, that might... They might force a few people to upgrade phones. That might hurt a few people here. But I think we're almost at the point where you know, everyone can do that. And you'll have people on hand to help you out here. But you can just scan a barcode and you're in. Scan the barcode, you're in. There you go. Speed that up as far as getting into the stadium. There's so many ways you can do this. But I really think you need to find a way to – and I would love to see what they're going to do with the concession areas and what their long-term vision is. But I still am happy that we're going to look in-house and – Fix things. Let's fix things. Let's fix the bathrooms. Make that a priority. That is, that's good. Let's fix that. Things, uh, hopefully we can see the Henderson Center get transformed because it's going to be a while before we get a basketball arena, maybe. Is that high on the list? Let's get a new basketball arena? you got to get the baseball park built first. And honestly, I haven't felt this optimistic about a baseball park in a long time. Political promises, athletic directors have passed, Everyone's tried to take a shot at this here. This thing's going to get built. This thing is going to, is actually going to be, we're going to be able to touch this thing here in the near future. This is the first time I believe that. I haven't believed that. Even when we were at the, at the groundbreak, well, it wasn't the groundbreaking, but we announced it years ago when Coach Cook was on hand and you had the mayor there and you had Mike Hamrick there. And they were like, okay, this is going to happen. And then COVID hit. It's like, this is not going to happen here. Yeah, you know, it's not going to happen. If it is, it's going to, you know, and then you hear, okay, we got to resend the bid because, you know, the bid came back and it's a little too high. So we're going to have to cut some things here. And you're thinking, okay, so we're, we're not going to get the palace we were promised. So now I think we're going to get the baseball park that we were promised. And I know some things that I can't wait to share. And I hopefully, we, you know, I think we're going to have Christian Spears back with us next week to talk about them. And, We'll see what the presentation looks like. That'll be at the Board of Governors special session. The the Govs will be in a special session to talk about this thing. And I think we're going to get it finally. We're finally going to do it. We're going to see the baseball park here built. And then there's going to be baseball in Huntington. And you can have maybe some afternoon baseball games. And you can have some evening games because you have lights. You don't have to worry about, okay, well, Got to call the game due to lights, no sun. So you got to feel good about that. All right. We'll get some of your phone calls and text in. Don't be shy. 877-420-TALK. And the text line is 304-396-TALK. More coming up on The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Our final segment of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I want to thank uh, our text line. I had a texter tip me off. Let me know that uh, there's not a release out on it yet, but the men's schedule is on herdzone.com right now. So let's go over that. And, of course, if you've got anything you want to share with me, you can join us on the text line 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. That's the number to be a part of the text line. So the herd, if you look at the men's schedule, exhibition game against Rio Graham, also Radford, that is um, exhibition on August 14th. So the herd is taking on Maryland and an exhibition on August 19th. Then Virginia Commonwealth University, VCU, that's on August 25th at Hoops Family Field. On the road, August 29th at Butler. And then the University of Pittsburgh making an appearance at Hoops Family Field on September 2nd. September 7th, Cleveland State on the road. And then on September 11th at home, it'll be the University of the Pacific. Let's get into what we really want to know about. What's that Sunbelt schedule look like? So here we go. You've got Kentucky on the road starting things off against Kentucky. And then, that's on September 16th, and then on September 24th, what are we calling this thing? What do we call this thing? Marshall, West Virginia. Conference flows. It means even more. Not only is it bragging rights, it's conference standings. More important. 
So Marshall, West Virginia, that's going to be at Hoops Family Field. And then on the road, September 30th against Coastal Carolina. And then uh, a dip out of conference on October 4th against Robert Morris. Back into conference October 8th at South Carolina. And then on October 15th, it's going to be Old Dominion University at Hoops Family Field. And then on the 19th of Wednesday, Wednesday, October 19th, it's going to be Georgia State on the road. October 23rd, Georgia Southern. And you look at the final two, one game out of conference at Wright State on October 26th. And then November 1st, it's going to be a home matchup against James Madison University. So that's uh, that's the herd schedule. Again, uh, there wasn't a release on that just yet, but it's now on herdzone.com. So again, uh, thanks to the text line, a couple people tipping me off. So I do appreciate that. And you can always text in three zero four three nine six talk three zero four three nine six eight two five five. So well, let's kind of compare a little bit here. So I think what you're going to see here is there's not necessarily going to be that if Marshall's playing on the road, the stadium is going to be available thing here. Because if you look at this thing, you see September, say, for example, September 2nd. September 2nd, it's going to be you know, Marshall taking on Pitt. Uh, you look at some of the crossover games here. And again, these aren't all going to be the same because it isn't like basketball where you have men's and women's basketball and everyone has a representative, right? So... And that's different. You get different members here because you get affiliate members as well in the men's side of this league. So you've got University of Kentucky, you've got West Virginia coming in, and that's going to be great. South Carolina coming in, and really, along with honestly, along with the other teams that are going to be in this thing here. I mean, you got Marshall Old Dominion. So basically, Marshall Old Dominion, and then James Madison. So three new Sunbelt schools have soccer, have men's soccer. And then you add the three affiliate members, Kentucky, West Virginia, South Carolina. So you add those members. And then you got Coastal Carolina, which was an affiliate member in Conference USA, so back in its home league. So you've got Coastal Carolina, you've got Georgia State University, and you've got Georgia Southern. So you got a nice mix of new teams coming in, teams that already were in the league, affiliate members. I think it's going to be a strong league. And again, how fun is it going to be? Every year, Marshall and West Virginia not only playing for pride, state pride. Doesn't matter if Marshall wins a national championship. You lost to West Virginia. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You want to win both those things. You want to beat West Virginia and you want to win the national championship because you, if you win one without the other, you got to listen to somebody. So if you win the national championship, don't beat West Virginia. You got to, I'm going to get DMs. I'm going to get DMs from West Canova. That's all I know. My guy from West Canova is going to, or is it East Canova? He moves around a lot. My guy from, uh, my guy from Canova is going to text me, message me and say, look, you won that national championship. You didn't beat WVU. So I got to look forward to those texts. My intern today, Christian Paul, you don't know my guy from, uh, he moves around from East and West Canova. I mean, you're, you're a Canova guy, right? Okay, so you don't know who uh, my guy is? I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, uh, you know, off the air. I'll tell you from off the air. He's like a professional wrestler from Parts Unknown. Yeah, he's like a mask man. He really is. You didn't know that. Yeah, there's a, there's a guy who is in Canova who is like, he's like a, he's like a professional wrestling villain almost when it comes to herd athletics. You got it. Okay, he knows who I'm talking about. So my guy, my guy from East West Canova, we can't say his name here. We can, but we can't. So you got to beat West Virginia in soccer. You just have to. Chris Grassy understands this because if not, you're gonna you're gonna have to take that. You're gonna have to take that and like it. You lose to Kentucky, that's fine. You might have some Kentucky people that give you some business, but if you lose to West Virginia, you're going to have to take that and like it. So that means that game means a lot more. It should be a great crowd, hopefully. Uh, you know, see, I love that series because you know, the, the two fan bases, soccer fan bases especially, getting really after it. So uh, it's a good series, win or lose. I think it's good for the state for soccer. Uh, definitely good for the state for soccer. All right, that's going to do it just about for the show. I do appreciate everyone tuning in. We'll be back on Monday. We're going to do it all over again. Don't forget, we got Stanley Cup playoff action. Game number two, that's coming up on Saturday. You can listen to it on our sister station, Cat Sports 93.3, 1340. Also, 
Uh, we have got Pirates baseball starting the seven-game homestand tonight. It is going to begin with the San Francisco Giants. We've got it for you, 7.05 first pitch. You can listen to that game again right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm going to be back with you on Monday. Hopefully, we're going to know a little bit more next week about baseball. we got a lot to get into next week, so hopefully we can get – Michael Swan on the show. We can get Chris Grassy on the show. We'll talk a little bit more about these soccer schedules. We'll start looking ahead to some of the matchups we can expect in the Sun Belt. So we've got a lot planned for you here over the next few weeks. So I appreciate everyone being here every day. We'll do it on Monday with you here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Huntington W231BS Huntington broadcasting from the Oscars Breakfast Burgers and Brew Studios. This is ESPN 94.1 at AM 930.